So I'm logged into a SharePoint 2013 site with the BPA Quality 2015 version. I know that's a little confusing. It's not SharePoint 2015. It is SharePoint 2013 with the BPA Quality 2015 version. Um, as you can see, there's lots of new things on here, but we're going to work through this process. Um, you can see the XRM platform is here uh, in that we've surfaced many web parts from the BPA solution to actually create the UI. Our UI is meant to allow users to quickly move through lots of data and to see the relationships with a full 360 degree view between items with it between disparate lists. On the left we've got our navigation tool. In the center we've got two instances of our uh, data viewer web part. We say we're customer centric. What does that mean? So our solution starts with the concept of an account. Now in quality an account can be things like your customers, your suppliers, your vendors, and the like. And here we can see different SharePoint views that are surfaced within the different tabs of the data viewer web part. Of course, any results of these views can be exported directly to Excel for further manipulation. We've got a new feature that we allow uh, you to quickly identify favorites of accounts that you may be working on today or for that current week. And what that allows you to do is create a quick view of just your favorite accounts that, you're, that you can quickly refer to. Of course, you can turn off something from being a favorite simply by clicking on the star again. So here we see a view that shows us all of our customers. Here we see a view that shows us our suppliers. Here we see a view that shows us our favorite accounts. Very simple, very straightforward, and allows your users to get to the information they need quickly. One of the other things we've added is this concept of a satisfaction. And this is a calculated value that, allow, that takes together uh, the satisfaction rating from all sorts of different tasks, such as uh, meetings or calls or um, events, and creates a calculated value of how satisfied that customer is with you. Um, nice to have and easy to report on. We've also um, added the concept of uh, a dashboard for any of these views. And what the dashboard is, it allows you to surface any of your reports as well as your uh, graphs and charts into a single dashboard. In this case, we've got two reports which shows our neglected customers and our unsatisfied customers looking at that average satisfaction race, uh, status rating, and then um, a chart, a gauge, on the average client satisfaction. So to show you what I mean, uh, this report is actually simply a neglected customer's report using our report builder from the report section of the quality solution. So if we look at our report builder, we can see there's a report called neglected customers. Now, as you know, with our report builder, this enables you um, as a power user to extract the data into some very sophisticated reports and save those locally for your own use or to publish for everyone else. So let's go ahead and take a look at this. Uh, the main things we want to show you with our report is that you can search for data within a parent list as well as child list that um, are uh, subordinate to that list. We can see we've grabbed the different fields that we want from those lists and we've created a pretty sophisticated filter using drag and drop that shows essentially for all account types that equal to customer, we want to see the number of events that are zero and the number of tasks that are zero. This would be a neglected customer. Of course, we don't want that forever. What we can do is we actually set up the variable number of events to be um, an event date that is uh, within six months and a task that was in within six months. So essentially, this report is showing all accounts that have had no activity in the past six months in terms of events or tasks. We then simply surface that within the accounts dashboard so that we can identify the accounts that maybe need uh, to be contacted. Very simple, very easy to use, yet very powerful. Okay, let's jump into the quality side and start with um, non-conformances. So again, you can see a very similar view. We've got our data viewer web part here. We've got our list of open nonconformances. We've got another SharePoint view of all of our nonconformances are closed and then a dashboard. What's nice is using uh, the BPA solution, we um, on the closed nonconformances have calculated fields in terms of time to close and the compliance value uh, upon closing that conformance, which we'll talk about in a minute. On the open side, we can calculate the number of days open 
and also what stage in the review that um, nonconformance is in as well. If we look at a specific nonconformance, you can see that we've also integrated a Yammer feed that's specific to the view we're looking at. So over here on the right, we've included the Yammer from bpasolutions.net, and um, this is just normal Yammer and normal integration with the SharePoint, but you can see that we're surfacing different SharePoint functionality within the BPA solution, so that if you are using Yammer, um, it's very easy to add it to uh, any of the views that you would like the Yammer feed to be there on. Of course, all the good things with Yammer pull forward, such as adding a new discussion. You can see we've got groups that are part of this discussion. Spell that right. And then as that goes out, emails are sent. Um, if those notifications are on, people can respond to the Yammer um, discussion right within the email, and that will, of course, be surfaced back into the, um, the Yammer discussion thread. So if we look at the nonconformance details, essentially what we're looking at here is all of the, uh, the fields within the underlying list for nonconformance. So we've got our title, we've got who is the quality manager assigned to it, the status, um, the start date, the account this nonconformance is associated with, the contact, details of the nonconformance, some calculated fields such as are there any overdue tasks within this, uh, what is its compliance status and the compliance value that is assigned by the Quality Assurance Manager description. But we've also incorporated our new hierarchy tool, which can actually now fit within the Data Viewer web part. In here, we can see the relationships between this nonconformance and the account it's associated with. So as we look um, down, we can drill and see that this nonconformance the M&H Tires actually has two nonconformances, a delivery issue and a missing pieces. This miss, missing pieces nonconformance also has a series of actions in here. Now, of course, we still have all of our great uh, pop-ups that allow us to view the details of anything that we're looking at without actually having to leave this page. So as you know with SharePoint, when you do a page refresh and a flip, you then have to come back. In our case, we can actually do a quick view into the list, and of course this is another configured SharePoint view, so you can show as little or as much of the items within the underlying record that you want. And of course right from here you can open it and move to it as well. So a very powerful tool in our hierarchy tool that we use without, uh, throughout the system. Down below, uh, we've got all of the related items across the different lists that support your quality solution. This gives you, for this nonconformance, a 360 degree view of everything that's going on from the root causes that this is associated with, the actions being taken, any open or completed tasks, automatic tracking of emails that are related to this issue, calendar items, attachments, and of course using our mobile app you can take pictures um, of let's say an incident or uh, something that happened with this uh, corrective action and it would be uploaded automatically and related to it. So very dynamic, very clear. Um, with the root causes, uh, identifying or associating different CAPAs with single root causes is really the best way to begin to isolate um, the root cause of why things are happening, whether they're incidents or corrective actions that are, are being uh, reported. In this case, you can select multiple root causes um, using the normal Ishikawa references, or you can add your own. And of course, um, these are all fully searchable using our filter view web part. So here we see, um, looking at slip, we bring up slippery floors. We can do that, select it, and we've added, oops, I had already added it. I wonder if we'll add it twice. No, it didn't realize it was already there. So you can have multiple root causes. If we look at actions, we can see if there are any actions related to this. Are there any tasks? We can see that, there, that the discovery user has to review an incident report that's uh, a to-do action item. We can look at related to it, calendar items, attachments, and pictures. Of course, within this nonconformance, you can track all of your tasks as well using these quick action buttons that are fully configurable with your solution. So if I want to add an action, add a task, 
log a call. I can simply click the action button. It fills in the task name call. It is already assigned to me. Um, and I can go ahead and put in the details of the call. And then this item is automatically related to the account M&H tires, the contact associated with this kappa, and this nonconformance. I can also manually go in and associate it with anything else that I want to create these sophisticated relationships with. And that's really the power of what we're doing with the BPA platform, is that we're able to take a single item and relate it to multiple other items in other lists. So we'll go ahead and save that. And we can see now in our task lists that we've got a completed call. If I want to see the details of that call, again, I can just open it up with a quick view or actually click into it and see the details of that call. Very sophisticated and very powerful. Another thing that we can do um, with the nonconformances is that we've also associated a dashboard with this view. And in this case, we provided a couple key uh, metrics that we think you should track, such as the number of nonconformances by month, number of nonconformances by cost, time to close, um, nonconformances by category, and nonconformances by root cause. One of the new things that we have within, actually two things that we've got with our charts, is that you can um, zoom in on charts so that if they are as busy as this one, you can create a larger version of that chart and take a look uh, a little bit easier to see what's been going on by root cause. The other thing is that you can then click on a chart and view the underlying data that created that chart so that you can zoom in to what uh, are the items within, within there. Okay, so let's take a look back at our nonconformances. And our nonconformances in this case are all moving through the stages via a workflow. And the workflow in this case can be driven by um, either a SharePoint designer workflow or what we're using here is Nintex. And what you'll see is that you can use these third-party workflow products or the out-of-the-box SharePoint workflow products to automate any of your business processes but still keep it within the construct of what BPA is offering. So let's go ahead and take a look at this uh, m &H issue, delivery issue and look at, actually let's move something that is under investigation. Let's go to this broken package so we can see a little more of the workflow steps. And we'll go view the workflow history. So in this case we can see it's running the nonconformance workflow. If we look at the details, we can see here that we've got a three-step action plan that allows us to investigate, create an action plan, and then measure the effectiveness of that action plan by the quality manager. Um, we can see that this is running, and if we wanted to see who has been doing what, we can click on the details, and we can see the task history um, for who's been doing what. So we can see um, Stefan is pending. Um, this task here associated with this plan. Looking at individual items and their related workflows is important, but we've also incorporated a timeline view essentially of all of the Kappa issues and their various stages. So here we've got the investigation, action plan, and verification, the three-step workflow. And then this way we can see each of the Kappas that are open and where they are within their workflows. And this allows us to uh, see across stage who is where. Now you notice some of these are actually colored. What this allows us to do with this tracking is to do calculations of data within the Kappa so that you can visually be alerted to things that need attention. And in this case, what we're looking at is days open so that as they hit certain milestones, we'll change the color from white to yellow to red, depending on the number of days open. And what this will allow you to do is quickly come in and say, okay, what's going on with a customer complaint here? It's been open 177 days, which is beyond our KPI standard. So a nice, powerful way of looking and tracking the Kappas that are in process. 
Let me take a look at uh, a couple things that are going on here, question-wise. Uh, we had a question about, is it possible to extract or integrate customers from an existing database? Absolutely. Uh, there's a couple ways you can do that. You can use just standard uh, SharePoint services, such as um, Excel services or copy-paste, or you can use um, the BPA SQL connector that allows you to SQL synchronize data from um, a SQL database into the system. Or we've got the new data import tool, which I'm not too sure if I have. Data import, which allows you to grab a CSV, uh, comma separated, Excel, or what have you, select your file, map your fields, save your configuration, and then import that data. So in this case, we've got a con contacts configuration that quickly allows you to import data, and you can see the field mapping is pretty sophisticated. That allows you to take the field uh, from the designated list that you're sending it to, map it from the source. To the list, you can do um, unique constraints across them, and you can also concatenate fields together um, upon import. So very sophisticated, easy to use uh, data import tool that's in here. Okay. So we've gone through nonconformances on the quality system. Let's go ahead and take a look at our audit section. And really, audits uh, originally were simply homes for the information related to an audit. Who was the auditor? When is the audit? What's the name of the audit? Um, and the concept is that any sort of activity that is happening related to, let's say, a, a corrective action or preventative action or, or an actual uh, 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 CAPA issue um, can be related to an audit so that when an audit occurs, all of those tasks, phone calls, activities, meetings, outcomes, attachments, will be aggregated together into a single audit. So what we see here is the uh, 2015 ISO 9000 renewal audit. We've got a 14,000 uh, renewal audit. We've got a fire risk audit here. If we zoom into one of these audits, we can see all of the related actions, tasks, emails, calendars, and attachments from those um, that are related to this audit. Then using our mail merge capabilities, we can um, export all of that information into a simple audit report that is a Word template that you can create into however you want to create it. And so what we'll see here is the audit report with all of the information merged together into a single report. What we've added in the new release is the concept of audit questions. And what we've done is created a list of standard questions that you can associate with an audit that you would want to have answered before an audit happens. So in this case, um, we've got a list of audit questions. There are three here. But we can go ahead and add a question. And you, are, you can keep a list of questions and have them related to a specific standard. So that if you wanted to see all questions related to, let's say, 31,000 at that list, then you could simply check them all and add them to your audit. And then with, once they're added to your audit, you can go ahead and um, answer those questions specific to this audit. Nice to have, help speed along the process and the like. Um, also within the audit section we have the concept of a shared calendar and this calendar allows you to see all meetings across all audits um, in a single view and we've also got audit dashboards as well. Works the same way as all the other dashboards we've seen before. Can be completely configured based on your custom reports and the different charts that come with the system out of the box. Moving on from quality, we now have integrated risk management. Risk management is comprised of three different sections, your known risks and uh, the tracking of those risks based on the impact and probability, the controls that are in place to help mitigate those risks from happening, and incidents that can be related to risks to help you identify the cost and the impact of uh, those risks and whether we should spend more time managing them. So let's take a look at risks. We can see 
Um, again, we've got the same view with our data editor web part. We've got our different SharePoint views across the top. We've got the concept of favorites. Again, here we should start seeing repeating uh, methodology that we use. Uh, we've got considered risks and all risks. Obviously, considered risks are risks that we're currently actively using. All risks are risks that are in our risk database. Um, we've got four considered risks here, fires in the front office, current exchange rates, chemical burns, and supplier dependencies. Just like before, as we zoom in on a specific risk, we can track any details that we need to about a specific risk. But then we can see all of the related controls, mitigation strategies, which is a new concept we have, actions relate this risk to audits, all of the related incidents that have happened. We can see here we've smoke seen. Um, documents, tasks, items, and attachments. So again, for a specific risk, um, we have now a full 360-degree view of all the things that are happening uh, around that risk. Uh, for controls, obviously these are assets or procedures that help mitigate that risk from happening, such as fire detection systems and sprinklers. Actions are things that are happening um, to help mitigate that risk, such as installing new sprinklers at maybe a new plant. Mitigation factors are things like risk transference that have happened, and of course, incidents that have happened. The main thing with risks is that the impact and probability calculations are usually done um, on a risk matrix. So if we look at our risk assessment, we can see that we've got all of our risks, uh, we've got our action and control statuses, but we've also got um, period values of the impact and probability calculations of a risk happening. In this case, um, we only see one period, uh, but we see two greens, one yellow, and one red, plus the trend um, across uh, that, that value. Um, what we're using here is that we allow clients to create multiple risk matrices. In this case, we're using a simple three by three, but you can create a five by five risk matrix. You can also, within that risk matrix, define the uh, values that are associated with um, uh, the color changes with the period values. And then, of course, for each of the uh, risks, you can see which risk value set you want to use. Now, when you look at a risk value, again, it is impact times probability. So if we look at this risk value and we edit it, we can see that at this specific point in time uh, that this period was put in, let's say it was March, the impact is low and the probability is moderate, right? So if you look at things like uh, delivery delays associated with inclement weather, the impact is high and the probability is high usually in the winter months. The impact may be moderate um, and the probability moderate in the rainy season and then low and low in the not rainy season or the not snowy season. So as you look at your KPIs across the year, you'll see it going from green to yellow to orange uh, or red, depending on the time of year. As those risks are a higher impact and a higher probability, you're going to want to, of course, enact more action plans or other uh, controls, uh, such as maybe stocking more inventory on site, having alternate transportation to get inventory to a job site, and things like that to ensure that if that does happen, we've mitigated the uh, risks of it having the impact that could be predicted. Of course, some risks you just want to accept, um, and that's just the price of doing business. And what we're trying to do is provide um, a way to manage your risks, your controls, and the effectiveness of those controls across your team. Um, you can see we also do full incident tracking, which allows you to uh, manage incidents that happen um, and then relate those incidents to a specific risk so that we can start calculating total cost of incidents related to a specific risk and maybe we're not spending enough money on controls um, if we see the costs of the incidents uh, rising. Okay, um, the last piece we want to take a look at which is also related to workflow and I know is near and dear to most of you people is uh, document management. Usually a initial spot that most quality uh, solutions uh, have implementations related to. Um, in this case, we've got um, uh, a document uh, dashboard, and the best place to start is here in this compliance document. So we've got a series of documents that are in various stages. We've got uh, documents that are being drafted, documents that are being routed for approval, and then documents that are being published. Of course, depending on who you're logged in as, 
Um, you may only see published documents as part of your view. Um, if you are actually within the approval process, you will have other documents that uh, are not published but are ready for review. We've also built workflows around document retention that allows you to archive documents after a period of time. But if we look at documents that are in revision, again, another SharePoint view that simply filters documents that are in a revision status, we can see that this view is showing um, the number of days it's outstanding, the revision date versus today, and the like. But similar to the other Kappa workflow, we can go ahead and take a look at the underlying workflow and its history. Um, we can see that this document is in a document management approval workflow, and this workflow is a little more sophisticated. Um, again, this is the Nintex workflow um, tied together with BPA, and we've got um, sort of a voting uh, on a document for approving it or declining it. If it's approved, um, we go through a quality management validation. It's either declined or approved. We can update the item, and then it goes for distribution. If it is distri distributed, it goes then to a published status. So again, very uh, sophisticated workflow. You can also see the details of who's been doing what in terms of the task history by user, the type data was assigned, the data was completed, and the outcomes, and, uh, and the like. So what this allows you to do, of course, within um, the compliance documents, you have, as you can see, all the normal SharePoint uh, things such as version histories, um, check-in, check-out properties, and things like that. Uh, so we're not breaking any of the underlying um, tracking or document management capabilities of SharePoint. We're just simply servicing a better way to manage and track all of those documents. Okay, we've got a couple questions. Let me check these out before moving on. Nope. Okay, I think we're good. All right. Well, so that's the full tour that I wanted to give you of the new system. We took a look at some of the data import, the new feature there. We looked at reporting. We looked at the document management side. We reviewed the risk management with risks, controls, and incident tracking. And we've also gone through the improvement process related to nonconformances um, as well as audits. Um, outside of that, what I would like to do is um, offer to you the ability to reach out to BPA. We have dedicated uh, cloud trials that allow you to do some configuration of the quality solution, add your data in a protected environment so that you can uh, showcase the solution internally to get buy-in. We've got a shared trial site that you can access if you want to play around with the solution. We do offer one-on-one -on -one demos we can do remotely with your team and do some basic configuration with you so that you can see the power of what BPA brings to the table. We've got offices in Asia, um, Switzerland, as well as here in the U.S., so we're pretty close to most of you out there, and we would look forward to hearing you um, from you and helping you with your needs, whether they're CRM-based or quality-based. Again, thank you all for coming, and um, actually we do have a couple questions that just popped up here at the last minute. Um, is the document approval workflow pre-built? Uh, will it still be possible to customize the routing of documents? Yeah, absolutely. That is not a pre-built workflow. That was simply built using work, uh, standard workflow tools such as Nintex, or we see a lot of SharePoint designer workflows. So um, all of that is completely configured uh, based on your requirements. <clears throat> Yes, you can get a copy of this demo we just went through. We can do dedicated cloud trials. We can do the shared trial. And we can even do an on-site um, uh, proof of concept as well. We will have this. This is a recorded session. And it will be on our website under the company section starting uh, most likely tomorrow or the day after. So check back on that. And uh, in terms of CRM system supported, this has its own account and um, contact tracking, um, and our CRM solution is a CRM solution, um, which is a separate product built on the same XRM platform. Uh, pricing, we have both user-based pricing, so that if you've got a small group of users, 5 or 10, it becomes very cost-effective for you to implement the solution for those 5 or 10 users. 
Typically, if you get close to 60 or 70 users on the system, you want to move towards the server license, which provides you unlimited instances and unlimited users on the solution. Also, if you start with the quality and you want to add the CRM template, it's very inexpensive to do so because essentially you do not have to buy the XRM platform twice. So once you become a BPA customer, there's lots of room for expansion. Uh, we will contact you with the actual pricing of the solution. Uh, Office 365, great question. Uh, we have a beta version of the CRM solution on Office 365. As you all know, that's been a big moving target for people who want to deploy solutions on SharePoint on Office 365 because of the JavaScript requirements and the new Azure on the back end. Um, we're not comfortable yet having a full release of that product, but our goal is to have it later this year. All right, I think that's all the questions I have for now. It's 1240 here on the East Coast. Uh, for those of you that it is winter, please stay warm. And if you are warm, don't rub it in. Talk to you soon. Thank you.